Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Blanche SB, and in Serpents 3, we're going to be covering the basics again. And today, we're going to be covering data sockets. What exactly is a socket, and what kind of data do I need to be concerned with? Because as you program, you need to know about the data that you're working with and what Blender expects you to do with it. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Now, if you've worked on anything in Blender, you've already been working with data. And data can be anything from like whole numbers to floating point numbers to true and false. And so we're going to dive into each one of those, starting with the color socket. So color is a representation of many forms of data, but in computer language, you basically have a red, green, blue channel, and you have an alpha channel as well. So as you affect the alpha, that determines how transparent the color is. And then obviously as you adjust your blue, your green, and your red, you start moving towards white. You move them away, and you start moving towards black. Don't use alpha, then your color only has three channels. Sockets that we're talking about have a circular shape, or they can also have a square shape. If it's coming out as a circle, it's just one item or a vector that has um, multiple elements of that item. So color is a vector. It's got three or four different values that are all tied into one piece of data. The next data that we use a lot in Blender is a Boolean. And a Boolean can only have two values. So it can either be true or false or on or off. And examples of this would be using like the auto smooth on an object, you turn that on or off, or locking the viewport camera. So these are the checkboxes that you see throughout the Blender UI, but they represent Boolean data. And you can use Booleans both in the UI and in your code. The next up we have an integer, and all of the colors that we're using in Serpents 3 are different than for Serpents 2 because Serpents is now going to the Blender standard for the data socket colors that are being used in geometry nodes. Integer is any whole numbers, and this would be used in like a modifier where you have the array count on an array modifier or the bevel segments on a bevel modifier. Or it's also used for indexing values or counting things. Anytime you need a whole number, you're going to use an integer data type. Floating point numbers contain decimals. And good examples of this would be in your bevel modifier. The bevel angle that you're looking at is a floating point number. You can get you know, 78.05 degrees if you wanted. You could also pick like the bevel amount, like how much do I want to bevel from zero to one. The next data type we have is strings. And so strings are used all throughout Blender and you will no notice that these are probably more commonly used as like a file name or the name of your object. You can use it for putting labels on things in the UI. And it's, a string is literally just a bunch of characters tied together. So you have a string node. You also use strings in things like the asset node, where you're pulling out a path. Next data type that we use in Serpens is the icon data type. And Blender icons are used all over Blender. As you can see, the console, the trash can, all of these things are icons. You can see all over Blender, and they help users know what they're clicking on without having to read. So you can pick icons in the icon browser. You can also pick icons by loading an image. And for the B for Artist build and a couple other ways of generating icons, you can also use an icon string where you're just calling out the, the re equivalent string for what an icon is used for. And as you pick an icon, it's got an equivalent string that it's using. And it's I think it's typically a number. So when I pick a heart, it's going to output the number of that heart icon. And that can be used to generate the icon with other, other Blender versions or Blender add-ons. There's a none data type. And typically when you see a gray circular socket, we're re referencing like any type of data. And in this case, a none is going to blank something out. Uh, where you want your data to be empty. So if you want to empty out a string or uh, feed something that you want to feed it and empty starting out with, you can do that with a none. We talked a little bit about vectors already with the color. 
we have float vectors and these are most commonly seen where you're doing a location rotation or scale of your objects in blender but you can use float vectors for all kinds of things you also have integer vectors and you can change your vector size by going up or down you also have boolean vectors where you can have multiple bools stacked into one and these are going to have a circular purple data type on the socket now if you see any teal sockets used in the serpent's workspace these are representative of blender data and i'll talk about that in just a second but the one that i currently want to share is lis and this is the square socket so this represents a collection of items we have three items that form a list and so when you're using this you're going to be referencing any one of those three items and you can you can go through each one of them using operations inside of serpents now blender data this is a special kind of data and these also come in both the square and circular shapes so if you're referencing just the active object it's going to be one item or if you're referencing multiple objects in your scene you're going to have the opportunity to grab them like the list only it's a list of blend data so that's why it's got a teal color and blend data we're going to get that more covered in a different video because it's it involves a lot more explanation but this is just to let you know this is what you're looking at when you see the teal color we also have combinations of data so a date time node would give you a time as a string or it could give you the integer of hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. The date would be a string, and you have year, month, and day. So some nodes have multiple types of data that they allow you to grab from. You also have things like a scene context node where you can mix and match all the various data types built into this one node. That's pretty much it for covering the types of data sockets that you're gonna be using in Blender. And in the next video, we'll be covering the differences between program execution and interfaces. Catch you on the next one.